Good evening. I'm Mark Seal with your Lime Sports World. Now you can expect a traditional West Indies test team for the upcoming series against New Zealand. So it says head coach Otis Gibson during today's practice match against the Barbados 11 at the 3W Oval. Gibson said that fans could expect a more balanced squad in the absence of former captain Darren Sammy, with six frontline batsmen and four main bowlers. It's a question of having the opportunity now to pick four wicket taking bowlers, um, six batsmen that will put runs on the board and, talk, and, a, and a wicket keeper, you know. So um, the makeup of the team in the recent past has been slightly different. This one hopefully will have uh, a different outlook to it. We'll just have to wait and see what the final, the final squad is. The coach also believes that his team is capable of beating anyone, especially with the bowlers he now has at his disposal. We've got Jerome Taylor, who, who's, who's a quality bowler. We've got um, Roach back. Um, he's been our leader uh, for the last last while before he got injured. We've got Shannon Gabriel, who's improving all the time. We've got Shane, who's probably been the best, one of the best spinners um, in the world in Test cricket in the last while. And, and Rang, who's who presents mystery, you know. So we've got five bowlers there who, who are more than capable of bowling out any team in the world. Um, you know, and like you said before, it is just getting our batsmen to, to put the runs on the board for those guys to operate, you know, and, and if we can get some consistency with the bat, we know that we've got a bowling attack that can take 20 wickets, so um, that to me says that that is a balanced attack. Well, the series begins in Jamaica on June 8th, and we'll have highlights from today's day one practice game later at 8.30 during CBC Sports on TV8. Meanwhile, on day one of the four-day game between the High Performance Centre and Bangladesh A team at Windward, the HPC made a 292, with the Jermaine Blackwood getting 140. The Bangladesh A team, there are five without loss. Staying with cricket, ESA Field Pickwick not only are the easiest semi-final qualifiers to date, but in winning their Sajjik General T20 quarterfinal last night at Kings of the Novel, they eliminated the defending champs, Sajjik Kaur Life UWI. We pick up the action in the final over of UV's innings, with Pickwick about to be penalized the 18 runs for a slow over it. Tino Best was working up some pace as usual, and Akeem Dewar wasn't in position for what was sent down. But this made-up shot still went for six, much to the amusement of Best. This was followed up by a beamer, which luckily missed Dewar, but took his bat and went for four. Tino got his walking papers from umpire Tunley Franklin as a result. Gerard Jiltz, he had to come and finish off the over, the last two balls. Aline, here's campering for a two, which he got, and that brought up his 50. Dewar was 44 not out along with Aline, and Yui were 151 for a six from their 20 overs. Shea Hope opened for a pickwick with Craig St. Hill, and he carried his bat through the innings. Here he is driving sweetly through extra cover for four. But it wasn't just the Pacers. Hope was also going after the spin. Here hitting Stephen Jacobs over the infield. 29 runs came off of the two overs that Jacobs bowled. Maybe Captain Floyd Reefer bowled him an over too many. But Jacobs shouldn't feel as if he was targeted as Hope took peace off of everyone except for Kavem Hodge. He had none for 14 from his four. UWI managed to get one wicket. St. Hill was caught by Hodge at point after Miss Hidden Dewar. He was gone for 35. And Jacobs almost justified his skipper bringing him back for that second over, as he should have had Hope caught at square leg. But miscommunication between those two fielders allowed the two runs to get in for Hope's 50, off just 33 balls. And from there, your mistake is my beefsteak, took effect. Hope smashed 42 of his next 19 deliveries. In all, he struck seven sixes. This one, a pull off Ryan Austin that hit the base of the scoreboard. So much form he was in that Pacers were sent back where they came from, on bended knee. Big brother and captain Kyle Hope, who had replaced St. Hill, was quite contented to turn over the strike to Shea who was playing around with no one, his seven sixes overshadowing his five fours. Any bets as to how the match ended?
Shea was on 92 and Kyle on 20. Pickwick won 57 for 1 in 19 overs to win by 9 wickets. Well, Pickwick joined Super Center Spartan and the Counterpoint Wanderers in the semis. Now, the last quarterfinals was scheduled to start a few moments ago between YMPC and CGI Maple. Live commentary is on Radio 94.7 FM. Pride of Gall Hill missed an opportunity to close some of the gap on leaders' BDF sports program when they suffered an upset last night in the Didicel Premier League at the National Stadium. Paradise beat them three goals to one to keep Gall Hill in second place on 30 points. Now, in another game, Pinelands put some daylight between them and the relegation zone with a chunking of last place Magnum Darrells Road. While in the mid-table, Clayton's Colatonic Notre Dame beat Mackerson Braden's Hill. We have highlights from those two fixtures. Pinelands' goal rush started early in the fifth minute. A cross from the right sailed by everyone except the stuck out left boot of Rantes Lawrence. And he would get his brace from this corner kick. This time it was his head that was golden to make it 2 0 in the 24th minute. Now, two minutes before half time, this is what the Darrells Road keeper did for a clearance? Really now? And this is how Dario Wilson rubbed salt in a wound. 3 0 at the half time. The second half was moseying along until the 77th minute when a fleet-footed Lawrence sealed his hat-trick and secured a 4-0 victory for the Pine over Darrell's Road. Now, there was only one goal that decided the Dames' defeat of Britain's Hill. Glenn Carlo Cobham's left boot bomber in the 13th minute was all she wrote as Dames got the three points from Britain's Hill. In netball, the action continued in the Caroline Sinclair zone in the Pine Hill Primary Schools competition today at Briar Hall. CBC's Marsha Boyce reports on some of the action. We pick up the action in the second half of this game between Luther Thorne in the lighter blue and St. Bartholomew's. Luther Thorne goal shooter Leanna Brathwaite scored two of her three attempts. They had a 4-1 lead at the break and stepped it up a notch in the second half. Goal attack Selena Taylor led the way with six from six. Luther Thorne winning eight goals to one. Up next, one of the zone favorites, Blackman and Gollop in the Green Bibs versus Wilkie Cumberbatch. Goal shooter Denisha Davis here benefiting from the obstruction call. She would score both of her goals in the first half to put them up to nothing at the break. Goal attack Tishani Payne did likewise in the second half, converting two of her three attempts. Blackman and Gollop would be 4-0 winners over Wilkie Cumberbatch. Luther Thorne were back on court, this time against Vauxhall in the Orange Bibs. Goal shooter Brathwich with the missed attempt, but no worries as Taylor would get the rebound and score. Now Taylor chasing down the loose ball to find center Lakeisha Reed. Reed with a good pass into Brathwit. Surprisingly, only two goals were scored in this game, with Luther Thorne winning 2-0. Gordon Walters in green and yellow took on St. Bartholomew's in the next game. That's goal shooter Kiara Chase putting them ahead. At the other end, Danielle Griffith did the goal scoring duties for St. Bartholomew's. That was her lone goal. They trailed 2 1 at half time. The second half, though, was all one way traffic in favor of Gordon Walters. Chase converting yet another. She scored six of her seven attempts. Gordon Walters would go on to win this game seven goals to one. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. And in basketball, Harrison College traveled to Dyden Griffith and whipped the home team 31 to 19 in the Sports Council's Cooperators General Insurance Secondary Schools Tournament. CBC's Shane Jones reports. Harrison College in maroon and gold taking on Dyden Griffith. That's fancy. Okay, I hear you. Couldn't finish though. Check out Jonathan Fowler through traffic and to the hoop. Nice. Fowler again. Great look for a long two. Settles and hits it. Fowler bossing the court. Fadeaway jumper from mid range. At the other end, Jaden Walton for Dighton Griffith. Boom, banging it in from beyond the arc. Turnover. HC on the break. Easy lane. And they're up 13 11 at the half. Walton on the fast break in the second for Dighton Griffith, getting two of his nine. Dishing out to Walton again, and the home crowd loved that. But HC would pull away, beautiful grab, and look at that, waiting for the hands to go up, then made it easy for himself. 
shot from a difficult angle off the mark and Dayton Griffith gets a rebound but Fowler just everywhere steals and cleans up. The homeboys not rolling over though, Walton quick in transition. But it wasn't to be, HC winning 31 to 19.